So where we looked at Nyquist's capacity, uh, an equation that tells us the relationship between the bandwidth of our communications channel, the number of levels that we use in the signal to transmit the data, M, and the data rate that we can achieve, how many bits per second we can deliver. Increasing the bandwidth increases our data rate. Increasing the number of levels increases the data rate. That's what the equation tells us. We can calculate some values. We did that yesterday. One thing the equation doesn't tell us is that increasing the number of levels causes more errors. Okay, that's, that's not captured in this equation because that's due to noise causes uh, more errors. It's harder for the receiver to receive the data in that case. Because this equation, the Nyquist capacity equation, assumes there is no noise. So it, it's true if there is no noise, just increase M. But in reality, there is noise in communication systems. So we need to look at it uh, from other viewpoints as well. The example we went through, we went through for the case, a semi-realistic case of a telephone line you have coming into your home. The bandwidth available for voice calls is 3,100 hertz. And the old dial-up modems would use that bandwidth to tr send data instead of voice. So we calculated the, the Nyquist capacity for the, for the telephone line. And if we had two levels, we got 6,200 bits per second. Then a few other examples we got down to, to get 56, or about 56 kilobits per second, we needed 512 levels in the transmitted signal. 56 kilobits per second was a typical data rate available for your dial-up modems. Getting higher data rate, okay, going from 56 kilobits per second up to 100, up to, to um, 1,000 kilobits per second, would require M going very, very high which causes more errors and the trade-off was that at that small amount of bandwidth it doesn't make sense to try and send much much higher data rate so what happened with internet when you after dial up internet what become the way for you to access the internet so before or after dial up access people started to move to ADSL as well as cable modems ADSL, and this is not the topic, but ADSL uses the same telephone line, but it's not limited to just the 3,100 hertz. ADSL allowed, or took advantage of the fact that the telephone line actually allowed up to about one megahertz. So what ADSL did, one, one approach for increasing the data rates up to what, uh, one up to 20 megabits per second, it uses a larger bandwidth. So the advances in technology made that possible. But what if there's noise? So that's the example we went through. The, the question is, well, how much capacity can we achieve if there's noise in the system? And Shannon came up with another relationship between bandwidth and cap capacity that depends upon noise which is more realistic because in every communication system there is noise. The equation given here, the bandwidth times log in base 2 of 1 plus SNR. What's SNR? All right, B is bandwidth, C is the capacity that we calculate, SNR is the signal to noise ratio. Uh, so we'll talk about that first, give a couple of examples of SNR and then we'll see it's quite easy to calculate capacity uh, and to rearrange this formula to solve some problems. Signal to noise ratio, SNR, is quite simply the, the received signal power divided by the received noise power. So our signals we measure the strength of those signals. The data signal that was transmitted, we receive something, so we measure the strength. And similarly, we can measure the strength of the noise that we receive from others. 
and S and R is just the, the, the ratio between those two. So let's look at some examples of how we measure uh, signals and or, or how we may express uh, the strength of signals and then calculate S and R for some examples. In the past examples we've spoke about, we've given plots of, uh, we said S of T. S of T was the transmitted signal. We, we had an equation for the signal as a function of time. What were the units I used to, to indicate the signal strength? Anyone remember? Or remember the time domain plots on the x-axis we have time and on the y-axis we have what? Signal strength measured in what units? Volts is some of the, I think, is what I used in the earlier slides. So measured in volts. That's the signal strength. So, so plus, it goes from, say, minus one volt up to plus one volt. But we can also convert uh, volts to watts, a watt, okay, and power is also measured in, or the signal strength also measured in watts. Why? If you remember your relationship that power in watts is volt, voltage times amps. So if you know the volts, the number of volts, you know the, the number of amps in the system, then you can determine the power in watts. So there's a proportional relationship between volts and watts. So often we mix sometimes volts, sometimes watts. But it, it measures the strength, the height of the signal. In fact, in most of the examples from now on, we'll talk about watts. So we talk about the strength of a signal in the, the, the peak amplitude, say measured in, in watts. So let's say we transmit a signal, Tx to transmit, and let's say we measure the strength of that signal and it's 10 watts. That is, the, the peak strength of the signal is 10 watts. We transmit the signal. Remember the signal attenuates over distance. So we transmit the signal and the power, the strength, gets weaker over distance. So we can talk about receiving the at the receiver, we can talk about the this signal is received, we can say it's the attenuated signal. Uh, all right, the attenuated. That is, it's the signal uh, given the attenuation across the link. the power of that received attenuated signal is going to be less than the transmitted one. By how much less, we don't really know yet. We'll see in a later topic we can calculate that under some conditions. But at this stage, I'm just going to make up a number and say uh, our attenuation is a factor of 2, which means if we transmit at 10 watts, we halve the, the attenuated signal is half of the transmitted one, so we receive it 5 watts, just as an example. It depends on many factors. Distance, frequency, uh, antennas in wireless systems, and, uh, and they're the main things. So in this example, I'm just saying we transmit at 10 watts, and assuming no noise, we would receive a signal which is 5 watts. In strength. But there is noise. So we can also measure noise, uh, treat noise as a signal.
the noise signal, we could measure how strong the noise is as well and express that in watts. What is noise? From the perspective of the receiver, so someone transmits me a signal. From my perspective, that transmitted signal that I receive, the attenuated one, is the data. The noise is all the other transmissions I receive. So, for example, in this class, when I'm talking, I'm transmitting a signal. From your perspective, you hearing my voice is the data. That's the attenuated signal that you receive. From all the other people talking, from the air conditioners, from the door shut, shutting and so on, that's noise. That all combines to be noise from your perspective. So everything else that you hear is noise relative to the data you receive. So noise can be in a communication system. We've talked about different factors. There's thermal noise. There's uh, noise from some impulse or spike. There's noise from other signals, other transmissions. Let's say we can measure the total strength, the, the strength of the total of noise, and we measure it to be uh, now let's start simple, one watt. Okay, so the receiver receives the data at a strength of five watts and receives the noise at a strength of one watt. The signal to noise ratio is just the ratio of those two values. when we, the word signal in the signal to noise ratio refers to the attenuated or received data signal. Signal to noise ratio, SNR for short, in this case is 5 watts divided by 1 watt. The attenuated signal received divided by the noise received. And the watts cancel out, so it becomes dimensionless. It's just a ratio of five. There are no units there. Simply means that the received data signal is five times larger than the noise. And the signal to noise ratio has an impact upon how fast we can receive or how fast we can transmit our, our data across a link. Increasing the noise relative to the signal will reduce the amount of data that we can receive. We tried this example, I think, last week. When I speak at some level, someone at the back could hear me. If I speak at the same level, the same signal le level, but other people start talking, the noise increases, then it becomes harder for the person at the back to hear me. So less information gets communicated as the noise starts to increase. And that's what the Shannon capacity equation uh, uh, captures. So the first point, signal to noise ratio, the ratio between the received data signal, here I've listed it as the attenuated signal, the transmit signal taking into account any attenuation across the link, divided by the amount of noise we receive. So it's measured at the receiver. Don't get confused. If I tell you the transmitted signal is 10 watts, you don't necessarily use that here. You need to look at the received signal. So in the Shannon capacity equation, if we know the bandwidth of the link, if we know the signal-to-noise ratio for that link at the receiver, we can determine the capacity as B times log base 2 of 1 plus SNR. Let's do a quick example, very easy one. different example where we have, and I think it's in your lecture notes as a slide, we have, or it's very similar, we have a transmitted signal 
we transmit a signal and uh, let me try and plot in the frequency domain the spectrum the spectrum the frequency ranges in megahertz from 3 up until 4 megahertz that's the plot in the frequency domain of the signal transmitted and to keep it simple to get started let's say we know across that link that we have an SNR of 251 it's not the same as your lecture notes but I just uh, you'll see the relationship shortly find the capacity spend a couple of minutes to find how fast can I send bits through this channel using this signal use the, use the Shannon capacity equation you will need to know the bandwidth you will need to know SNR well basically I have given you SNR the bandwidth you'll obtain from the from the frequency domain plot what is the bandwidth of our signal transmitted one watt not one watt one the unit megahertz okay so the spectrum so this is not related to Shannon but the spectrum is three ranges from three megahertz up to four megahertz so the bandwidth is one megahertz so now you can just plug those values into the Shannon capacity equation where do we go B the bandwidth one megahertz one million Hertz So B is 1 million, 10 to the power of 6, S and R is 251, plug them in and get the answer for the capacity. And the answer is, anyone? B is 1 mega, 10 to the power of 6, times log, base 2, 1 plus 251. One million times log base two of two hundred and fifty two, which is about it's about eight, correct? Log of two hundred and fifty two this is, which is about two hundred and fifty six. And you know your computer scientists, you know that two hundred and fifty six, two to the power of eight is two hundred and fifty six. So log in base two of two hundred and fifty six is eight. So log in base 2 of 252 is slightly less than 8, 7.9 something. You'll use your calculator to find it. But I will approximate log of base 2 of 252 is approximately 8. So we get 8 times 1 million, which is 8 million or 8 megabits per second. easy to apply the Shannon capacity equation that the only challenge really is knowing when to use it because now we have two equations Nyquist and Shannon they both tell us the capacity but which one do we use well the hint is look at the information that you know in this question we knew the signal to noise ratio and we knew the bandwidth well Shannon 
capacity equation relates the signal to noise ratio bandwidth to capacity. So use the Shannon capacity equation. The Nyquist capacity equation relates bandwidth number of levels M and capacity. So if you know the number of levels but not the signal to noise ratio, then Nyquist is the way to go. Let's try Nyquist now. Let's say we want to achieve 8 megabits per second. That's what I want. The bandwidth is 1 megahertz. How many levels do I need in my transmitted signal? So we given a data rate, given C is 8 megabits per second, given B is 1 megahertz, how many levels do I need in my transmitted signal? What should M be? So now let's apply Nyquist capacity equation to work out another factor in this. This was using Shannon, Shannon's equation. What about the Nyquist equation? Capacity is 2 times the bandwidth log base 2 of m, the number of levels. We know the capacity we want to achieve, 8 million, 8 by 10 to the power of 6. We know the bandwidth that we have available, 2 times 1 megahertz, 1 by 10 to the power of 6, times log base 2 of m. Find m. Eight million equals two million times log base two of m. So eight million divided by two million is four. So four equals log base two of m. Find m. Just bring the two million to the other side and it becomes four equals log base two of m. which means m equals 16. 2 to the power of 4 equals 16. So log in base 2 of 16 equals 4. This tells us if we have 1 megahertz of bandwidth and we want to achieve 8 megabits per second, we need at least 16 levels in our transmitted signal. If we had less, we'd never be able to achieve 8 megabits per second. If I had 8 levels with 1 megahertz, I would only be able to achieve, what, 2 by 3, 6 megabits per second. So we need at least 16 levels in our signal to achieve the data rate we want. I say at least because these are theoretical uh, models of... of the relationship between bandwidth and capacity. They are limits. So the Nyquist equation says if the conditions are perfect, there's no noise whatsoever, then if you had 16 levels and a bandwidth of 1 megahertz, you would achieve 8 megahertz per second. But in practice, there are other uh, factors. There is noise. So it just tells us what's the lower limit of the number of levels. We, in practice, we'd need to use more than 16 to achieve uh, the, the appropriate data rate. So we use these two equations to work out some limits. In practice, we may not be able to achieve those limits, but we can get close. So it gives us an uh, approximation of how, how fast we can send data. It doesn't give us the exact value. If you have a link which has 1 megahertz bandwidth and you transmit a signal which has 16 levels, you're not guaranteed in practice to get 8 megabits per second. In theory, yes, if there's no noise. But in practice there are other things that this equation doesn't capture.
So it's used for a, a quick calculation of how fast we can send under some conditions. Back to our slide. So what do we see from Shannon capacity? Increasing the bandwidth, B, increases the data rate. Same, with, same trend that we saw with Nyquist. But the Shannon capacity equation takes into account also signal and noise. So remember SNR is in fact signal power divided by noise power. So increasing the signal power makes SNR go up. If SNR goes up, the capacity goes up. So increasing the signal power while everything else is the same increases the data rate. But if you increase the noise, keeping the signal power constant, keeping the bandwidth constant, but just increase the noise, SNR will go down and the capacity data rate will go down. So there are three factors in play there, bandwidth, the signal power and noise. There are some other things, again, which are not captured in this equation but are true in practice. Increasing the bandwidth allows for more noise. Okay, so we said increasing the bandwidth increases the data rate, but in practice, the larger the bandwidth, the more noise. The more noise brings this factor down and brings our capacity down. So in practice, there's a trade-off there. Also, increasing the signal power increases noise to others, into modulation noise here. An example of that is when I'm talking, I have the microphone on. Uh, you can hear me. But we say increasing the signal power, if I turn up the volume, that will make the data uh, capacity, the data rate better. Increasing the signal power increases the data rate. But what's the problem if I turn up the volume here? What if we just keep turning up the volume so the signal power gets higher and higher? What's the problem? A practical problem. Assuming we have a very a perfect amplifier, there's no echo or distortion, the problem is that maybe the people downstairs or in the room down the corridor start to hear me, which was really causing interference to their transmissions. So the the people in the next lecture room start to hear my transmission which they don't want to hear. So my transmission from their perspective is noise. So as we increase the signal power, we start to cause noise to other people. So that's the problem there. Any questions on Nyquist capacity or Shannon capacity? You'll see in the, the lecture notes, actually, I, it's next slide, the example we went through. We just went through this example, except in the question on the slide, the SNR is expressed as 24 dB decibels. But in the question I went through, I said it was 251. We haven't explained decibels yet. We'll do that, we'll do that now. 